In this presentation, we will look at fitting the data for a charging capacitor in Excel. Note that this is not a function that is automatically supplied by Excel's trend line. Excel has built-in trend lines for the following functional forms, a straight line, a logarithmic dependence, a polynomial dependence, a power law, and an exponential function. But sometimes the data you want to fit does not fit any of these categories. It's a more complicated function. The data in the capacitor charging example that we're going to work on does not fit any of these simple forms supplied by Excel. The theory for a charging capacitor is close to, but not quite an exponential. It has two parameters, a saturation voltage and a time constant and one variable, the time. And it's given by the form V saturation times the quantity one minus the exponential of minus T divided by the time constant, capital T. In this scenario, we are responsible for entering our own uh, fit function. So we are going to do that in column C, but first we are going to insert some rows at the top where we can place our fit parameters. So we've made room for them in cell B1 and B2, and these are the saturation voltage parameter and the time constant capital T parameter. And we've given them some starting values, some just fake values to get us started. And so I put in ones for both of them. And then in C5, I am entering the formula equal dollar sign B dollar sign one star open parenthesis one minus exp open parenthesis minus eight five slash dollar sign b dollar sign two close parenthesis close parenthesis the dollar sign b dollar sign one refers to the saturation voltage parameter and as a parameter we want it to be the same for all of the data so that's the dollar signs enforce that so when the formula gets pulled down that uh, cell reference will not update the A5 refers to the time variable in column A, and we want that to update, so it does not have dollar signs. And the other parameter, the time constant parameter, is in B2, and so that is referred to as dollar sign B dollar sign 2. The multiplication must be made explicit, so dollar sign B dollar sign 1 star, etc. So now we are going to take the data in, in A and B, the X's and the Y's, along with our theoretical function that we have put in C. So we're going to highlight A, B, and C, where we have data and fit, and make an XY scatter graph. And then the idea of fitting will be to take our parameters, the V saturation and the time constant T, and play with them and change the numbers until the two uh, graphs, the graph of the fit function and the graph of the data, sort of as much as possible, fall on top of one another, look alike. It helps when fitting data to a function to understand the role of the parameters in the fit. And so let's start with the V saturation. That is the behavior, the, the values that you will see after a long time. So this function flattens out as time gets large, and then V saturation is what it flattens out to. So looking at the, the blue, which is the data, the first curve, uh, we see then it's sort of heading towards seven. So that will be at least our first guess of a saturation voltage. So we can see what happened to the orange curve, the fit, when we changed the value in B1 to seven, it updated. And now the orange curve and the blue curve at a large time seem to be heading to the same limit now, but the orange curve is getting there much too quickly. So that brings us to the second parameter, the time constant parameter that we have in cell B2. So one approach is just to increase that uh, value in B2 and just keep watching the behavior of the orange curve and sort of keep changing uh, B2 until the orange curve and the, and the blue curve fall on top of one another. Uh, the more you know about your parameters, though, the better and the faster you will achieve your uh, a good fit. 
And so here's a hint about the time constant. It is the time that it takes to get to be about 63% of the saturation voltage. So if we take 63% of the saturation voltage, assuming it's 7, we get a voltage of about 4.41. And so if we look at our blue curve and say, at what time does the blue curve reach 4.41, we can see it's like somewhere in the, the teens. And that was that's what we'll use as the hint as uh, for our choice of B2, the time constant parameter. So when we put in a B2, a time constant of about 17, we see the orange curve, the fit, uh, falling mostly on top of the data, which is the blue behind it. And now, we're, so far, we've just been working visually, and in fact, that's all we'll do in this case. But we, we've seen in the past how we could modify this procedure and make it more uh, mathematical. We could take the residual, we could take the difference between our B and our C. So say in column D, we could calculate the difference B5 minus C5, and then we would square those because those could be positive, those residuals could be positive or negative, but we square them and make them all positive. And then we sum them up, so we're dealing with all of the points, and then we play with our parameters to minimize that sum. That was the procedure. That minimizing is what we were, what Excel did for all those trend lines it does know for the straight line and so on. So this this is the procedure one would follow in this case or something like it. But we're just going to work visually and say the orange looks like the blue good enough for us. This is one of those situations in which I actually like to have a legend. But right now the legend will say series one and series two not very informative. So let's make, let's have a legend, but make it say what we want it to say. So let's right click on the data and then choose select data. And then in the dialog box that comes up, we will highlight series one and click on the edit button. And then we can change its name to say charging data and then repeat the process for series two and, and name it the fit. And that will give us a, a meaningful legend. And then we can want a uh, title and axis labels. And so we can uh, add them one by one, or we can use one of our layouts. In fact, I tend to stick with layout number nine, even though it, it provides an automatic trend line to a straight line, which is not appropriate here. But then I just sort of go in and delete the trend line. But I just like so many of the other features of layout number nine.